They say there's no such thing as a truly original idea, but you know what? That's okay! Taking inspiration from the past and building something better is called progress. And according to our resident science whisperers and forward thinkerers, progress is good. But do you know what's really nice? When innovation and nostalgia combine to recreate a cult classic, or in other words, a spiritual successor. These two magical words describe any game that takes inspiration from a previous title and keeps most of the same themes, styles, or gameplay mechanics, but aren't technically part of the same saga or universe. The reasons for making a spiritual sequel rather than just a sequel can vary, though. Sometimes it's original developers in a new studio wanting to recreate an old favourite, or maybe even just a natural evolution from fan-made mods. But whatever the case, when they're done right, these digital love letters to our bygone favourites can be a powerful thing indeed. Let's look at some! I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are ten incredible spiritual successors to classic video games. Number 10. Two Point Hospital, Theme Hospital. Bloody budget cuts. There's an alarming outbreak of mime crisis spreading like imaginary wildfire. Ghosts have taken over one of the wards, and we keep hearing announcements that urinating anywhere in the hospital will not be tolerated because we couldn't afford to install toilets. Such is life in 2018's Two Point Hospital, which channels the charm and whimsy of the original silly infirmary sim, the 1997 classic Theme Hospital. Bullfrog Productions' medical marvel had an enduring legacy like nothing else, and when it came same time for ex-Bullfrog veterans to act on a 20-year ambition to revive the genre with Two Point Hospital, we weren't disappointed. All the trademark irreverent humour is back, packaged in a slick, modern simulation title. Serious tasks like balancing budgets and building efficient hospital layouts pay off when you're able to cure ailments such as jest infections that turn patients into clowns, Freddie Mercury impersonators suffering from Mockstar disease, and very literal cases of lightheadedness. From the ludicrous animations to the intuitive UI, the attention to detail makes this a beautiful successor to a late 90s vintage, and better yet, the console port is out now, so go on, get out there and cure some mimes! Excessive force is encouraged. Number 9. Wasteland 2 Fallout Wasteland 2 was one of the earliest success stories on Kickstarter. In Exile Entertainment, led by former Interplay co-founder Brian Fargo, smashed their initial target of $900,000 in under 43 hours, raised a total of $2.9 million, and proved there was still plenty of demand for old-school, tactical RPGs, while also paving the way for similar crowdfunded success with Divinity Original Sin and Pillars of Eternity. This 2014 triumph had all the nutritional value of original flavour Fallout. Unforgiving turn-based combat, multifaceted characters, random overworld encounters, and an erring commitment to traditional RPG mechanics. One early mission sees you liberating an agricultural centre from an attack of the giant mutant vegetables. And that sums up most of the game, really. Straddling the line between brutal social commentary about the post-apocalyptic survival of humanity and, well, violent cults committed to good manners. Of course, this spiritual sequel was an actual sequel to Wasteland 1, released all the way back in 1988 and predating Fallout by nine years, so really, Fallout should count as the proper spiritual successor. But the unlikely revival of a genre once lost to time makes Wasteland 2's achievement worth celebrating. Number 8. Wargroove – Advance Wars This this is how you gain instant cult favourite status. Take a long-neglected franchise, enhance it with some gorgeous pixel art, and crucially, add in the bestest of military commander boys. Oh, just look at him, he's got armour and everything! Intelligent Systems' long-running Wars series dates back as far as 1988 with Famicom Wars, but the Western market will be most familiar with the Advance Wars iterations on the Game Boy Advance and the Nintendo DS, which introduced countless youths to the HORRORS OF 
warfare through the medium of cutely animated turn-based tactics. Hooray! After an 11-year absence, however, developers Chucklefish decided to take matters into their own paws. I'm sorry, hands. Releasing Wargroove in 2019. While aesthetically the comparisons to Advance Wars are clear, the setting and story is much more akin to Intelligent Systems' other hit franchise, Fire Emblem, replacing tanks with trebuchets and bazookas with broadswords. Classic Advance Wars mechanics remain, like the importance of control points and the expandable nature of most units, but subtle enhancements make a huge difference, like the critical system that encourages smart unit positioning. The multiplayer is magnificent too, with crossplay, a hot seat mode, and a substantial map creator. Number 7. Demon's Souls – Kingsfield Oh, you expected Dark Souls to be here, did you? Mm, no. That'd be far too easy, and From Software doesn't do easy, do they? So think of Demon Souls being the spiritual successor to Kingsfield as the Dark Souls of one game being a spiritual successor to another, if that makes sense. While Dark Souls is undoubtedly a fine spiritual successor, its forefather, Demon Souls, was itself inspired by a much older series by the name of Kingsfield. First released in 1994, Kingsfield is, quite literally, where the real Dark Souls begins. The punishing difficulty, the foreboding dungeon crawling, the bleak setting, the creepy enemy design, the emphasis on exploration, the unique attack animations for each weapon, all the key ingredients for a juicy Soulsborne are found here, if you look beneath the surface. President of From Software and the creator of the Soul series, Hidetaka Miyazaki, has stated himself that Kingsfield, one of his favourite games from his youth, provided plenty of inspiration for the core mechanics of Demon's Souls. Although Miyazaki is hesitant to call it a spiritual successor and shot down the rumours that it started life as a Kingsfield sequel, we still think Demon's Souls counts as a spiritual successor to the renowned franchise. Plus, Kingsfield gave us the iconic Moonlight Greatsword, so need we say more? Kiss me the police. Number 6. Octopath Traveler – Final Fantasy VI There are plenty of throwback titles that borrow elements from classic 90s JRPG series, but if Octopath Traveler producer Masashi Takahashi claims his title was designed intentionally as a Final Fantasy VI successor, who are we to argue? Development studio Acquire's previous title, 2012's Bravely Default, was heavily inspired by Final Fantasy V, and even started development as a sequel to 2009's Final Fantasy The Four Heroes of Light. And 2018's Octopath Traveler exudes more of that big Final Fantasy energy with every pixel. Just look how gorgeous those pixels are! Blending retro spites with high-definition lighting and effects makes this a beautiful world that really captures the feel of an epic journey. You follow eight separate characters and their story arcs, which sometimes veers into generic fantasy fare, but overall it's still a cracking tribute to the old double F. Yet it still manages to reinvigorate the traditional turn-based combat. Multi-attack boosts can be saved up over several turns to be unleashed on enemies weak to your specific attacks. This can break shields, skipping their turn and leaving them vulnerable. Each battle is a fascinating exercise in tactical timing, and also how not to make us hate random encounters quite so much. Number 5. Axiom Verge – Super Metroid And Bloodstained Ritual of the Night – Castlevania I know, I know, two entries in one, but with the Metroidvania subgenre enjoying a renaissance period in the last few years, we can't have one without the other. 2015's Axiom Verge is unashamedly Metroid, and it doesn't so much wear that influence on its sleeve as it does an entire tinfoil Samus outfit complete with a gun arm that it points at people making pew-pew noises. But that's by no means a bad thing for a title made by a single man, that being Thomas Happ, and his love for Metroid. The steady flow of unlocked abilities and branching paths is reassuringly familiar, yet weapons and puzzles are unique enough to feel fresh, keeping that vital spirit of discovery alive. As for our Vania options, may we suggest Bloodstained Ritual of the Night? Released in 2019, it bears more than a striking resemblance to 1997 vintage Castlevania Symphony of the Night, and like Axiom Verge, it's not afraid to show its roots. Koji Igarashi, director and writer of the Castlevania series, is the brains behind the, the blood stains, having set up new studio art play and raised a staggering $5.5 million on Kickstarter for the project. 
The sheer amount of literally everything is an absolute delight, whether it's weapons, powers, combat styles, or cosmetic options, and the stunning visual presentation, surprisingly varied locations, and excellent enemy designs make this the perfect Castlevania sequel in all but name. And Igarashi even included this slot machine boss fight in a wonderfully brazen dig at Konami's casino games business model. Well played, sir. Number 4. Dishonored Thief It's easy to look at any successful modern sneak simulator and declare fairly accurately that 1998's Thief The Dark Project made them all what they are today. But as far as worthy successes go, even the 2014 franchise reboot simply renamed Thief or Thief 4 if you're a serious about this, can't hold a candle to Dishonored. Yes, there are differences, understandable as the first game came out in 2012, 14 years after the original Thief, and Corvo brings much more flexibility and mobility to his brand of stealth, able to teleport to ledges, possess guards, and even hold his own in combat, but he never forgets his heritage, which is clear in Dishonored's game design that rewards patience experimentation, and exploration of the beautifully bleak Dunwall. The always-changing mechanical layout of the Clockwork Mansion, the masterpiece level of Dishonored 2, is evocative of Constantine's mansion, whose increasingly bizarre rooms defied all logic and expectation. And then there's the Adamire Institute, once a rich folk's solarium, now a disease-ridden fortress, which is strikingly similar in tone and general creepiness to the iconic Shalebridge Cradle in Thief Deadly Shadows. Take a bow, Corvo. You've made the granddaddy of grand larceny very proud. Number 3. Bioshock System Shock 2 Looking Glass Studios certainly knew how to make them back in the 90s. Not only was there Thief, but also 1994's System Shock, the groundbreaking FPS RPG hybrid that taught us never to trust creepy artificial intelligence. And yet we still keep making these mistakes! After leaving Looking Glass, Ken Levine and several other employees later founded Irrational Studios and made a little-known title that, honestly, probably hasn't even been mentioned on YouTube before. Little game called Bioshock? Anyone? It's obscure, we know, but trust us. This crazy underwater gene-splicing trip owes plenty to its System Shock predecessors. The plasmids are a clear evolution of the psionic abilities. The eerie, pseudo-horror atmosphere is present in both series, even the lack of an NPC dialogue system. Strangely the absent in the more RPG-like System Shock was effective in giving each character interaction more tension, never knowing where it would lead. Oh, and there's a plot twist in both games, too! Who would have kindly thought that? It's not an identical comparison. The RPG mechanics of System Shock weren't transferred to Rapture, but at least they lived on through the Deus Ex family tree, which also counts as a semi-spiritual successor. Number 2. The Outer Worlds Fallout New Vegas Except if you're looking for that sweet new Vegas goodness just with a modern sheen, then yes, The Outer Worlds is absolutely the best choice. Obsidian Entertainment's superb corporate space adventure from 2019 made no bones about its similarities to the previous post-apocalyptic title. The variety of high-quality dialogue options evokes New Vegas perfectly, pulling from a more in-depth stat pool, so if you're an expert in, say, engineering or science, that would often lead to different outcomes. Companions are genuinely interesting, fleshed-out characters with plenty to say. In Outer Worlds, the faction loyalties are represented by the corporations as you develop unique relationships with each one. And tactical time dilation is basically VATS without the auto-aim, still allowing for precise manual shots to apply debuffs like maim, blind, or vaporize entirely. Watch out for that last one. Even tiny details like the terminals, the looting menu, or repairing weapons gives us the Fallout vibes. Throw in some truly superb writing and a colour palette that ventures beyond yellowy brown and you've got the perfect salve for anyone who got burnt by the recent Fallout shenanigans. Number 1. Perfect Dark – GoldenEye 007 There's no denying the impact that Rare's legendary GoldenEye 007 had on the landscape of gaming. It set the groundwork for modern first-person console shooters back when 3D console gaming was still finding its feet. 
And yet, when Rare and Nintendo lost the James Bond license, the unofficial follow-up, Perfect Dark, didn't simply recreate the winning formula, they improved it in almost every conceivable way. If that sounds like heresy to denounce Goldeneye like that, just hear us out. For anyone unfamiliar with Perfect Dark, it starred elite Carrington Institute agent Joanna Dark in an ambitious sci-fi plot, or spy-fi, <laughs> if you like dealing with evil military contractors' conspiracies to kill the US president, first contact with alien life, and even a full-blown interstellar war, which somehow, despite sounding absolutely insane, actually worked. And this near-future setting meant Rare were free to go gung-ho with gun variety too. Laptop guns that attached to walls, rifles that became land mines, remote-guided rocket launchers, and the Farsight, a sniper rifle that could shoot through walls. It speaks volumes that you could spend hours just in the optional firing range alone. Or you could lose weeks in the vastly improved split-screen multiplayer with AI bots and tons more options. Or tackle the multiplayer challenges, or play the campaign in co-op, or counter-operative modes. And best of all, it still holds up well today, thanks in part to the Rare Replay and Xbox Arcade remasters with modernised controls. So, sorry, Mr. Bond, we're not discounting your contribution to the genre, but... Well, Miss Dark can shoot through walls, so... Witch hunt! What? No, it's not a... You suck! Excuse me? How de... Roasted! Right, who even I... Three, two, one! Wait, why are you counting? Stop talking over me! What are you... Go! Oh, I get it now. It's a bonus number one, and it's Time Splitters. While we can, and already have, talked about Perfect Dark until we literally made first contact with alien life, there's an important part of the story we've missed. In 1999, several Rare staff members, including that Mr. David Doak, left to form Free Radical Design, who went on to create another masterpiece in multiplayer shooting. Time Splitters. This was the next evolution from the definitive Rare shooters, creating an almost flawless split-screen experience. Yes, we said almost flawless, as it took them until the third entry, Future Perfect, to make controls that didn't feel like navigating with a drunk oil tanker. That's not to say they were bad, though. Time Splitters 2 is my favourite. Why are you all booing? But ignoring the dated controls, Time Splitters was simply magnificent. The loose backdrop of time travel told through the trademark Rare-style humour was the perfect excuse to try absolutely anything with maps, characters and challenges. How about electrocuting chimps on a 70s disco dance floor? Or shooting dinosaurs in an Aztec ruin? A Wild West shootout between Elvis, a duck, and a gingerbread man or woman, maybe? It was ridiculous, it made no sense, and it needs to come back. Why, THQ Nordic, why haven't you brought it back yet? Anyway, we've also taken massive liberties with time and rambled long enough, so take it away, Cortez. Yeah! Time to split! I'll get the next one. And that's our list of excellent not-quite-sequels but should absolutely be sequels. But what about your favourite spiritual successes? Are there any we've missed? And have we finally gone too far with the two-for-one list entries? Let us know in the comments below. You can follow myself and Triple Jump on Twitter here, and while you're at it, why not support the things you enjoy by having a look at our Patreon? Finally, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and thanks for watching.